Salutations, cadets. I am your Commander Pika. This video is to serve as a guide for all new and free-to-play players on what weapons are obtainable without owning any DLC for Destiny 2. The focus will be all weapons that have a direct source, meaning you can actively and deterministically farm for them. There are notable exceptions that I will highlight. Weapons currently in the game but rely on specific vendor RNG. These will be highlighted as weapons to keep an eye on whenever the vendor sells them, but should not be weapons you are trying to farm or obtain. Additionally, some weapons are only available during Season 18, Season of Plunder, as they are either a free weapon from the Season Pass or might get rotated out of the loot pool. Check the description and other videos on the channel for seasonal updates. This video will be separated into sections for each weapon archetype and other thoughts, so feel free to skip around and pause whenever you like. Timestamps, terminology, loot sources, and a further breakdown of methodology will be in the description down below. And with that, let's get started. The sidearm is a high damage and close range primary weapon usually dealing in the sub 18 meter engagement space. Potent if you can master its range and recoil in both PvP and PvE. Enigma's Draw. Lonesome. Boudicca C. Allied Demand. The Keening. Brigand's Law. The Last Stance. Rang. Drang Baroque. Redback, 5SI. Punching Out. A Swift Verdict. 7th Seraph, SI2. Recommendations. Brigand's Law for easy access to the Volt Shot perk currently exclusive to Arc Season of Plunder weapons. Note, this is only applicable during Season of Plunder since it is part of the free Season Pass. Boudicca C or Allied Demand for any activity. Drang Baroque to synergize with Solar 3.0 incandescent builds with the longest reaching PvP sidearm. And 7th Seraph SI2 for Warmind Cell's shenanigans. Four additional options Farewell, The Fool's Remedy, and Brass Attacks at Xur, and Spoiler Alert at Banshee. Brass Attacks is the notable weapon as it's the only aggressive burst sidearm you can freely obtain. Pushing out the range a little, we get to some machine guns. Fast firing, high damage primaries, dealing an engagement space of 15 to 25 meters. A favorite for aggressive and accurate PvE and PvP players alike. NEOD. Escape Velocity. Pizzicato 22. 7th Seraph VY7. Iclos SMG V1.0.2. Out of Bounds. Borrowed Time. Mida Mini Tool. Callus Mini Tool, The Hero's Burden, Funnel Web. For recommendations, NEOD and Pizzicato 22 offer great versatility in PvP and PvE while being easily obtainable from focused Umbral Engrams. Lock down either a Seraph or Iclos SMG if you want to get into Warmind Cells. Callus Mini Tool is great for those Solar 3.0 incandescent builds, but as a free to play player, it will be very slow and RG dependent to get a decent roll of it. And then Funnel Web is an ad sling monster in PvE while also having great range and perks for PvP. Three additional options at Zer are Extraordinary Rendition, Friction Fire, and Death Adder. Friction Fire is a notable one for both PvE and PvP as it has one of the highest zoom values of SMGs, helping you fight more at range all the while having great perks for any activity. Auto Rifles, sitting between SMGs and hand cannons for range, these weapons offer versatility in their engagement space at the cost of less damage than their faster SMG counterparts and more reliance on precision, aim, and tracking. Range varies on frame and zoom from 20 meters up to 35 meters, with some going past 40 meters. False Promises 7th Seraph Carbine Tiger Spite Duty Bound The Last Breath Herod C Crate Come to Pass, Sorrow's Verse, Amit AR2, Gnawing Hunger. Recommendations, 7th Seraph Carbine to utilize Warmind Cells or Duty Bound if it drops from Free to Play Nightfalls this season. Come to Pass, since it's a quick grab from the Thunder God chest and decent against anti-barrier champions this season with Genesis and Adaptive Munitions. Amit AR2, the pattern is practically given to when you complete the Foundry Resonance quest. It's the only solar auto rifle you can get, and it's the easiest access to the incandescent perk for solar builds. And Gnawing Hunger, 
Once oppressive and fan favorite auto rifle in PvP and PvE, it's still a solid option and your only void choice. Three additional weapons Scathelock from Banshee's inventory and packages, Chroma Rush, and Chrysura Mello from Xur's inventory. Scathelock is unique in that it has 20 zoom to help push out range and stability. Hand Cannons Old, reliable, the ever constant armament in PvP and PvE. Solid range, damage, and versatility for any content. Max range spans 28 to nearly 40 meters depending on the sub archetype. True Prophecy. Pure Poetry. Awestringer. Dire Promise. DFA. Judgment. Fatebringer. Survivor's Epitaph. Seventh Seraph Officer Revolver. Crisis Inverted. Waking Vigil. Cantata 57. Nature of the Beast. Zowley's Bane. Frontier's Cry. Bottom Dollar. Recommendations. If you don't mind grinding and raiding, then Ostringer, Fatebringer, and Zowley's Bane are worth the grind for these S-tier hand cannons in PvP and PvE. I would give the edge to Fatebringer and Zowley only because these are much easier to obtain, farm, and eventually craft over Ostringer. You just have to do Vault of Glass or King's Fall Raid. If you can't raid and don't mind living in the Castellum, then Ostringer is your jam for PvP. Other choices, Cantata 57 since it's easy to focus from Ingrams, Pure Poetry from the Vanguard Ops playlist, Frontier's Cry if you manage to play during Iron Banner to snag a very deadly and aerial accurate 180 hand cannon for PvP, and Bottom Dollar to have a hard hitting void hand cannon. If you can't raid or miss Iron Banner, the rare hand cannon Allegro 34 is worth a look. Three additional weapons. Annual Skate from Banshee's inventory and packages, and both Ikelos hand cannon and Volpecula from Xur's inventory. All three are worth snagging when they are available. Annual Skate is a solar hand cannon with great PvP perks, Ikelos for making war mine cells, and Volpecula as the only stasis hand cannon that you can potentially acquire. Extending our max range, we head to the Pulse Rifle, a popular pick for the average PvP player and well-rounded for PvE as well. Versatile, safe, and easy to wield. The most impacted by zoom and frame, Pulse Rifles can reach 30 meters on the low end and 50 on the high end. Cold Denial. Smite of Moraine. Syncopation 54. GN7 Rifle. The Third Axiom. Horrors Least. Darkest Before. Stars in Shadow. Forge's Pledge. BXR 55 Battler. Ogma PR6. Last Perdition. Yesteryear. Recommendations. Both kinetic options offer something unique. Cold Denial is one of the lowest zoom pulses, so if you want the feel of a pulse rifle but for CQC and melee focused builds. And Smite of Moraine offers damage perks in both column 3 and 4, making it a versatile and high damage primary. Syncopation is craftable and gives you easy access to a stasis weapon, fun headstone perk for PvE, or solid starting pulse for PvP. Horror's Least is one of the deadliest rapid fire pulses for PvP, but it's only available in Nightfalls during specific weeks and it has to be a free to play strike. So if the stars align, definitely try for that. Otherwise, Darkest Before or Third Axiom will serve you well. BXR 55 Battler is an easy recommend for PvP and PvE. Versatile due to its accurate hipfire, long range when ADS due to its high zoom, and deadly perks for all activities with Kill Clip and Incandescent being amazing picks. And Yesteryear from Gambit is an easy to obtain Void Pulse with a multitude of perks to fit any situation you may come across. Two additional weapons. Grid Skipper from Xur offers a long range rapid fire pulse in the Void flavor that is quite good, and Banshee can offer in his inventory or packages Legal Action 2, the highest zoom, longest range pulse you can get. Bows, a unique weapon for a space magic shooter. High damage, seemingly infinite range, the trickiest part is mastering perfect draw and accuracy at range. Estimated ranges for them would place them around CQC territory when hip firing, and about 60 to 70 meters at the comfortable far range. Whispering Slab, Lunalata 4B, Arsenic Bite 4B, Point of the Stag, Strident Whistle. Recommendations. Grab them all since there are so few. If you have the material, Point of the Stag is an excellent endgame PvE bow, or try your hand at an incandescent Strident Whistle. 
Otherwise, the rare Hollis 4 Kinetic Bow is great if you want a very solid Kinetic Bow. Two additional weapons, Imperial Needle, the only Void free-to-play bow, and Wolf Tone Draw, a very solid and possibly more deadly arc bow, both from Xur's inventory. And the last for our primary weapons, Scout Rifles. Accurate, safe, long-range, decent damage dealing primary weapons. Not the first pick in PvP, but placed on a long-range map or with an easy-to-proc damage perk, and these weapons can be quite oppressive. And playing at a safe distance in PvE is always good when starting out. Nightwatch. Servant Leader. Persis D. Vision of Confluence. Staccato 46. Doom of Chelchis. Vouchsafe. Recommendations. Nightwatch. Easily Nightwatch. If you deleted it when you first started the game or haven't done the New Light campaign, go pick up the quest A Guardian Rises from the quest archive in the tower next to the Postmaster. It is a very, very solid scout rifle. Otherwise, snag a Persis D for damage perks and headstone, Staccato 46 to get incandescent for solar builds, and vouchsafe to have a great void scout that is quite like Nightwatch. If you can manage raiding, Doom of Chelchus is quite unique in having double damage perks or Firefly and Dragonfly as perk pairs. Since there are no Arc Scouts, the rare Sonata 48 is your only easy access option. Four additional weapons, Contingency Plan at Banshee or Royal Chase, Talons of the Eagle, and Eternal Blazon at Xur. Eternal Blazon and Contingency Plan are both worthy of a pickup since they are both Arc weapons to round out your elements. Special Weapons Moderate to high chunk damage weapons used to take out higher rank, higher health targets in PvE or one-shot your opponents in PvP. They use special ammo, so your shots are limited, so look for those green bricks and use your shots wisely. Like primary weapons, let's start with Extreme CQC Shotguns. Shotguns are close range chunk weapons. Simple and easy to use, not very long range, maxing out at about 7 meters. So risky in high level PvE and a bit inconsistent in PvP, but easy and popular weapons to run. Toil and Trouble. Ragnil D. Blasphemer. Wastelander M5. Reese Walker. Reckless Endangerment. No Reprieve. A Sudden Death. Found Verdict. First in, last out. Xenoclast 4. Dead Weight. Fellwinter's Lie, Mindbender's Ambition, Seventh Seraph CQC 12, Wishbringer, Retold Tale. Recommendations Ragnail D since it's so easy to obtain and has great potential for PvE and PvP. Wastelander M5 from Dares if you want a great PvP shotgun that you can eventually craft. Found Verdict if you want arguably the best PvP shotgun. 7 Seraph CQC for Warmind Cells, PvP, and DPS, and Retail Tail for a Void Shotgun. Three additional weapons, Sojourner's Tail, Eichelos Shotgun V1.0.2, and Fractithist, all from Xur. From those, Fractithist is one to keep an eye on as another stasis option with different roles. Bumping up the range to 15 to 19 meters, we have the Fusion Rifle, a charged, longer range, harder to control shotgun in essence, brings versatility and lethality to the table at the cost of ease of use. Riptide. Main Ingredient. Hollow Words. The Wizened Rebuke. Mida's Reckoning. Timeline's Vertex. Trinary System. Null Composure. Snorri FR5. Recommendations. Riptide is one of the best and most versatile fusions for PvE, Chill Clip to freeze enemies in place, or several perks to up your damage. Main Ingredient if you want arguably the best PvP fusion, and then Snorri FR5 or Minas Reckoning if you want top tier damage and ag clear options when you combine them with the Reservoir Burst perk. Two additional weapons from Xur, Cartesian Coordinate and Iota Draconis. Cartesian is a solid DPS pick if one ever shows up with a Vorpal weapon. Otherwise, you don't have to worry about Xur. Before we get to the more conventional special weapons, there are two archetypes that free-to-play players get a taste of, Trace Rifles and Glaives. Trace Rifles are basically if you made an auto rifle use special ammo, so it's a higher damage pseudo-primary weapon occupying in the 35 meter range. Used to be an archetype only released as exotic weapons, now there are legendary versions. Free players have access to one of them, Retraced Path. 
Fun to mess around with, having lots of top tier perks like Demolitionist, Incandescent, and Golden Tricorn for those Solar 3.0 builds. The other weapon type, Glaives, is the real jack of all trades special weapon. First person rapid melee weapon that pairs with exotic armor, mid range projectile like a 15 to 25 meter shotgun, and a deployable shield that gives the player high damage resistance in PvE and even PvP. Your first and only glaive is the Enigma. An interesting Swiss Army knife to have in your toolbox, worth crafting and leveling up to slot an impulse amplifier and unstoppable force. Back to more conventional special weapons, we have the Breach Loaded Grenade Launcher. Single shot, explosive projectiles that can be remote detonated by holding down and then releasing the trigger. Seemingly infinite range, so long as you can compensate for drop off. Skill shot and a nuisance in PvP, add clear or blinding tool for PvE. Pardon our dust. The Malicious Birthright. Salvager Salvo. Empty Vessel. Truth Teller. Recommendations. Grabbing all the match elements since it's a short list. For PvE, blinding grenades are good for stunning adds or spike grenades for more damage. PvP, proxy grenades for easier chip damage or spike to guarantee the one hit kill. If you don't have the materials to buy a salvager salvo from the kiosk, then the rare harsh language gives you an arc grenade launcher with field prep, so more ammo, and blinding grenades. Two additional weapons from Xur, Ignition Code and Deafening Whisper. Ignition Code is unique in that it can roll with slide shot, so you can constantly slide, shoot, repeat to pump out damage. And Deafening Whisper is a waveframe, meaning it leaves a trail of void fire on the ground that damages everything in its path. Lastly, Sniper Rifles. Long range, high damage weapons. Safe and simple options for DPS or a way to secure the one hit in PvP. Silicon Aroma. Long Shadow. Defiance of Yasmin. Praetis Revenge. Adored. Galu RR3. Apostate. The Long Walk. Beloved. Distant Tumulus. Iklos SRV1.0.2. Twilight Oath, Frozen Orbit, Fugue 55. Recommendations. For PvP, Silica Neroma, Beloved, and Frozen Orbit are all top tier options rolling with top tier perks like Snapshot, Opening Shot, Moving Target, and Firmly Planted. Easiest to acquire, Frozen Orbit in PvP or focusing engrams for Galu or Fugue. For PvE, Fugue 55, Galu RR3, Long Shadow, and Frozen Orbit are easier to obtain and give you solid options based on whatever primary weapon you'd like to pair with it. If you can raid, Defiance of Yasmin is a great pick for any activity, rolling Snapshot plus Opening Shot for PvP, or several damage perks for PvE with its origin trait overloading the magazine when reloading near allies. Four additional weapons, Far Future, Bite of the Fox, and Widow's Bite at Xur, and Shepherd's Watch and Banshee's Inventory and Packages. Only worth picking up if they have a good roll or missing a kinetic option. And now on to the heavy hitters, Power Weapons. Power Weapons, sometimes called heavy weapons by veteran players, are the hardest hitting weapons in a Guardian's toolbox. Using harder to come by power or purple ammo, these weapons are used to damage high health targets, bosses, or efficient at quick group ad clear. Starting things off, we have Swords. Close range weapons and very ammo efficient, swords have solid DPS and high total damage. Honor's Edge. Half Truths. Temptation's Hook. Abide the Return. Steel Sybil Z14. The Other Half. Falling Guillotine. Razor's Edge. Recommendations. Half Truths or the Other Half, versatile and great for traversal and speed running with their unique perk Eager Edge. Plus, if you are lucky, you only need one of the other half to drop as Deep Sight Resonant for the pattern. Otherwise, Falling Guillotine is still the top for add clear, burst, and DPS. And try to lock down a Temptation's Hook. It's a caster frame, meaning it sends a projectile when using its heavy attack. Four additional weapons. Quick Fang, Eternity's Edge, and Crown Splitter from both Xur and Banshee's inventory, and Negative Space from just Xur. The first three are the class-specific swords holding unique aspects that can only be wielded by their specific character class. Hunters get Quick Fang, so if you want to be a speedy ninja with a lightweight sword, Warlocks get Eternity's Edge, a Solar Vortex Frame, and Titans get Crown Splitter, the aggressive, hardest-hitting, highest-DPS sword in the game. Pick them all up when they come to town. 
heavy or drum loaded grenade launchers are up next. Good for ad clear and taking out higher health targets. Can also be deadly in PvP due to getting several shots that can quickly dispatch several guardians. Interference 6. Tarnation. Cry Mutiny. Outrageous Fortune. Typhon GL5. Crowd Pleaser. Behringer's Memory. Recommendations. Tarnation, since you just grab it from the helm, and it has an amazing static roll of field prep and chain reaction. Great for ad clear. Crowd Pleaser from Gamut if you want one of the Void flavor, and Typhon GL5 if you want the highest potential damage by grabbing one with the Explosive Light perk. Otherwise, if you're missing element options, I recommend both versions of Plumosa B, a rare grenade launcher that either comes in Solar or Void. Three additional weapons from Xur, Canis Major, Swarm of the Raven, and Blast Batu. Nothing really that stands out perk-wise, but worth a look if still missing some elements. Rocket launchers are next, longer range, burst damage weapons. Great for taking out high health targets and short DPS phases against a boss. Sleepless. Heretic. Ascendancy. Roar of the Bear. Ease and Vengeance. Palmyra B. Royal Entry. Recommendations. Palmyra B since it's very easy to craft or get from the world, and it's a great utility and damage rocket. Heretic or Sleepless, Heretic is easier to acquire, just requires a specific day at Altars of Sorrow, and a royal entry for burst damage with the Clown Cartridge perk or great overall utility. Solar options require specific weeks for Iron Banner, materials for Ascendancy, or rating for Heezen, so easy choice for solo players would be diving into Iron Banner when it's in rotation. Otherwise, the rare rocket Cupbearer SA2 is a quick grab for solar. Three additional weapons from Xur. Bad Omens, Coduello, and Huskow. Nothing truly unique, so pick up if they have a good role for what you need. Machine guns are quick and efficient ways to quickly dispatch minor and major adds on the field, not suitable for DPS or boss scenarios. Seventh Seraph Saw. Plank's Stride. Quillum's Terminus. Recurrent Impact. Chain of Command. Corrective Measure. Recommendations. Seventh Seraph Saw to access Warmind Cells and Ad Clear and a recurrent impact since it's very quick and easy to do the Rising Tensions quest. If you can raid, try for Corrective Measure, interesting pairings of Demolitionist and Adrenaline Junkie, or One for All, or Firefly for Ad Clear. If you can't raid, then the rare Exodus Mark I is worth a look in your collections as a quick void option. Two additional weapons from Xur, Shattered Cypher and The Swarm. Either worth picking up if missing those elements, or show up with a good roll. Lastly, we get to the linear fusion rifles, long range, high damage, precision, power weapons. Great DPS and total damage at the cost of requiring precision hits and charge time. Luckily, there is now an option for free to play players, Typhon Bore FR. Absolutely craft this weapon, it's one of the top DPS and total damage options in the game. Otherwise, look to the rare King Cobra 4 FR in collections as an arc option. Three additional weapons at Xur, Corsair's Wrath and Solar, Threaded Needle and Void, and Tarantula in Arc, all worthy to pick up for elemental matching. Some final thoughts and advice as we wrap things up. In terms of weapons that can be crafted, I personally think it wise to craft those given in the crafting tutorial quests. Otherwise, it is a good long-term investment for the Dares of Eternity and King's Fall weapons if you don't get lucky on your rolls, as those are patterns you will eventually and deterministically get if you do those activities regularly. The four weapons from Leviathan are much, much more brutal to obtain unless you have paid for Season of the Haunted. Adept weapons. You might have heard this term before. These are special variants of Nightfall and Raid weapons that you can obtain from the hardest difficulty of those activities. Briefly, they offer more weapon mod choice and extra stats. If you can do it, try to grab them, but they are not a necessity. If you were to chase any, I would recommend the Vault of Glass Adept Weapons, as their variant drops set perk combinations, and Adept Fatebringer's Firefly and Explosive Payload combo is very great for PvE and PvP. Otherwise, a few remaining tips. The Playlist Vendor Packages, so rank of rewards from Zavala, Drifter, and Shax. If you can, wait until later in the season to claim them, as the more times you have reset their rank, the more perks they can have at once. Remember to focus Ingrams at the star chart in the helm for specific weapons. They only cost an Umbral Ingram and 10 Legendary Shards, so not too expensive. It is okay to use rare or blue weapons if they fit the needs of your build, or you can't easily obtain a Legendary version of them. Your eventual goal should be to finally get a Legendary version for better perks and stats. And check Banshee every Tuesday and after Wednesday, 
as the perks on the weapons he offers can change. And then check in with Zer on Fridays. If you made it this far, thank you. I appreciate it. Just wanted to make a visual document for new and free-to-play players on what weapons they can chase, what roles they can have, and what I think are worth chasing. In the future, I do hope to have other guides on the channel on how to understand the basics of Destiny 2, so a like and subscribe is always appreciated. As always, I am your Commander Pika, be kind, have fun, and I will see you on the battlefield.